What is going on everybody? Welcome back, MTG here with another episode. If you're new to the channel, hi there. So today I have right here the Samsung Galaxy S22 and the OnePlus 10 Pro, and I kind of want to compare the two and talk about which one is best for you. Not which one is better necessarily, but which one is best for you. But before I do begin, I want to quickly just touch base on the wallpapers that you see on both of these devices. These are wallpapers that I created. I'm still learning how to make wallpapers, but I'll be leaving links of these wallpapers down in the description down below if you want to support me and the channel. So without further delay, let's talk about the S22 Ultra and the OnePlus 10 Pro. All right, so let's first talk about design. Now, when we look at both devices, they're definitely different. They are definitely different designs. But if we compared OnePlus 10 Pro to S21 Ultra, it would have had a little bit more of a similar build. But anyway, S22 Ultra is more of the boxy look and it's Samsung's premium flagship. Uh, they canceled the Note and their Ultra that lineup is now kind of the Note lineup. That's perfectly fine, I don't mind and OnePlus 10 Pro. There's rumors of OnePlus 10 Ultra, but that's for a different video. This is their current flagship. And while one is boxy, one is having just more of that like rounded feel to it, and you'll definitely notice. And when you hold both of these in the hand, uh, S22 Ultra is definitely more wider than the OnePlus 10 Pro, even though OnePlus 10 Pro has a pretty large display, almost close 6.7 inches Quad HD. Uh, the S22 Ultra 6.8 inches Quad HD. They both are 120 hertz LTPO uh, and they're both really phenomenal displays. However, Samsung's just gets so much brighter and it's more, so much more vivid. I really like OnePlus 10 Pro, like you won't go wrong. And I think with both of these devices, since display is the part of the phone we look at the most, uh, both companies did a really good job putting in really good displays because that's where we're spending most of our time interacting with our phone with display. For me, especially that's a factor that I look at. If display is really good, then I'm gonna use that phone and luckily both of these devices have phenomenal displays. Which one is a little bit more brighter and visible outdoors and more vivid? Samsung is definitely the way to go, but you kind of have to really nitpick to notice that. Uh, and I, I sometimes do nitpick. Anyway, other than that, um, they're really just slabs of glass. They definitely showcase their, you know, they're different. If you see this type of design, this is Samsung, this type, this is OnePlus. Now, while Galaxy S22 Ultra, it has a matte finish to it, and this green one doesn't get too much fingerprints unless you sh sh shine it at a certain angle of light. Uh, OnePlus 10 Pro, also it's the same. This black one, this volcanic black is what it's called, doesn't grab too much light, and it has a satin finish to it. I really, really do like this satin finish. Uh, the camera bar, or I guess this camera cutout right here, this is glossy and it does attract some fingerprints. It has its Hasselblad, Hasselblad, uh, the pronunciation, I, I believe it's Hasselblad, uh, or the um, its logo right here, the writing MP2D50T. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, I have it in my full review of what it stands for. Uh, phone second generation or s something like that. It's, it's a long thing, but there is that uh, naming right there. Uh, three large camera lenses and the OnePlus logo, uh, USB-C, uh, no expandable storage, is just a SIM card as well as some set of speakers. Um, looking at the left, we have the volume button, which is my personal, personal preference. I like having power on the right and volume on the left, but some may disagree, some may not, some may agree with me. Right side, we got the power button as well as the mute switch slider, the mute slider, alert slider, let's put it that way. So you can switch from silent to vibrate to ring. Please, more companies, bring this. We really need it. It really does come in clutch. I hate like opening my phone and going through settings and just, this is just so much, iPhone has it too, but I just like how OnePlus is ring, vibrate, and then silent. It's just so amazing. At the top, we have a set of a mic right here. We have a second set of speakers right on top of display. Um, display wise, OnePlus, Camera, why is it in the corner? I like how Samsung has it right smack in the middle with theirs. So next time, please. I mean, if you if you do come across this video, that's just my personal preference. Uh, or just go display without any cam front camera. Go with OnePlus 7 Pro. I absolutely love my OnePlus 7 Pro. It has the most futuristic 
display design because of its camera module. And yeah, it's a mechanical piece to it, but I absolutely love it and it still works like a charm. I absolutely loved it. I wish they didn't kind of revert back to this hole punch, but they, they obviously probably know better than I do. Uh, and they had their reasons for that. S22 Ultra, power button and volume button on the right side, uh, set of speakers on the bottom, a SIM card slot, as well as USB-C, and the S Pen, the S Pen right here. So it does take up some space, but we'll get to this in a little bit. They both have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Left side, there's nothing, and the top, a mic right here, uh, and the front-facing camera is in the middle. But I really, really do like this box design, and both of them do fit really well in the hand. This all comes down to preference, which one you like more. Honestly, I, I, I'd i still go with the Note. I still, it just gives them some more heft to it when I'm holding this device. And I, I also do like the S Pen as part of that design. Uh, but OnePlus has really kind of uh, cleaned up their design in the past couple of years too. This is a more uh, sleek and elegant. It's a taller design as well. It's not as wide as the S22 Ultra. I definitely say try both of them out in the hands, but for my personal preference, I'm just gonna have to go with S22 Ultra. Okay, so when we come to performance, these are flagships from OnePlus and Samsung. Therefore, they're gonna perform like a champ. They both have Snapdragon 8.1. I mean, let, let, let's just put out the specs, Snapdragon, 8 Gen 1, excuse me, uh, 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage on the OnePlus 10 Pro. And in North America, that's the only configuration you can get. Whereas Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, uh, it is 8 gigs and 120 gigs of storage, the base model, but I have the 12 gigs and 256 gigs of storage, bought it during the pre-order period uh, for the same price. But their bases are still 8 and 128 gigs. Uh, so just do keep that in mind. In day-to-day -day use, uh, they're great. There's no need to kind of dive into detail and talk about which one performs better. In day-to-day -day use, they both get the job done. They're very fluid, snappy, buttery smooth, let's put it that way. They have no hiccups whatsoever. Uh, you can rely on both to get your daily tasks, watching YouTube videos, um, emailing, texting, calling, whatever it is both of these devices are going to get the job done. Playing Call of Duty, for example, I've been getting into Call of Duty more and more lately, and it's it's amazing. They're really good. Uh, they're no slouches. And I think we're at a point where devices or chipsets as well have gotten so good that even if you have like my OnePlus 7 Pro is a three-year-old device, I believe that has a Snapdragon uh, 855, correct me if I'm wrong in the description down below. Uh, I lose track of chipsets and the years and whatnot. Snapdragon 855 is what I remember last. Um, but that had 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. Still play Call of Duty, it performs like a champ. They're both running Android 12. Obviously you can tell they have their own custom skins. Uh, one UI on the Galaxy S22 Ultra as well as Oxygen OS 12 on the OnePlus 10 Pro. However, OnePlus 10 Pro is kind of looking more and more like Oppo, uh, but it's still fairly clean. It's still fairly clean. However, I've come to really like One UI a lot as well. One UI is definitely, Samsung is definitely cleaned up. If you remember the days back of TouchWiz, oh, that was just filled with bloatware and just filled with a bunch of gimmicks in here and there, and Samsung has definitely changed that up, uh, especially with One UI 4.1. So they're both running Android 12. Uh, but the big dilemma here that I want to talk about performance, and I'm adding software into this too, is how long they're getting software updates. So Samsung has officially said they're going to put out four years of software updates. So Android 13, 14, 15, and 16 is coming to the Galaxy S22 Ultra. That's really good because I truly believe that more phones should be getting longer software updates only because we're holding on to our phones longer than ever before. Because phones are getting so good, there's really no need to upgrade every single year. In fact, every two, three years. Like if you have a OnePlus 7 Pro from 2019, I still think it can perform well into 2023. Obviously, it's not gonna be getting anything past Android 12 as software updates. As for OnePlus 10 Pro, right now it's looking like three years. So 12, we already have Android 13, Android 14, and Android 15. But I hope that more Android OEMs do take some cues from Samsung and put in more effort to pushing out more software updates. 
as well as Google, for example, because, you know, Pixel 6 doesn't have four years of software updates. They have five years of security, but three years of software. Anyway, that's what I want to add with software. Uh, but you won't go wrong with performance. Let me just tell you that, like, let's put specs aside. Both of these devices, they're going to perform like a champ. And I've used both. And you just got to kind of try it out for yourself too. But in my experience, thumbs up. All right, let's talk about cameras. Cameras are probably one of the most unique and important things about a phone. And every single year, more and more manufacturers are putting more effort into their cameras. And for those who are subscribed to my channel and know me, I'm not too much of a camera guy. Like I'm, I'm not gonna talk and dive into all the different camera features because that's just not me. So if you're looking for more camera specs and all that stuff and camera comparisons, well then, uh, there's definitely other channels out there that have more in-depth camera videos of devices. But for me, uh, there's definitely more versatility in the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Uh, in daytime photos, they both perform really well. I'll put it that way. Um, and in night mode and video wise, they're also perform day to day. I'm not too nitpicky either with those. I'll be putting up some sample images. But the one thing I really do like uh, is with the Galaxy S22 Ultra, it has 100x zoom. And sometimes I, I need to take a picture and kind of zoom in, and this 100x zoom is actually usable. And I, that's what I absolutely love. It is usable. I really do love it. Uh, now, 108 megapixels, it's normally been down to, pixel been down to 12. Uh, I don't really mind about that. Uh, with OnePlus 10 Pro, they definitely added a bunch of new features and they're, uh, you know, the relationship with Hasselblad, they have a bunch of new things in their camera. They got video, they got night mode, uh, they got portrait. If you go to more, they have a 150 degree, they have dual view video. Uh, they got a pro mode as well as some movie long exposure. So let's go to, if you go to 150, there's a 150 degree view um, and you can use it. It kind of distorts, like it, it's literally like you're on a skateboard kind of thing or on a GoPro. Um, and if we take a photo like that, and it's gonna come out like, just like that. So 150 degrees, makes sense, right? Or you can do it like literally like a fisheye lens. Take a picture of the OnePlus 10 Pro box and there it is. Like that's a really cool feature, but how often are you going to be using that? Probably not too often, but a normal photo, a normal daytime photo, really both of them get the job done. It really does come down to preference. Which one do you prefer? Which one is more feature packed for you? But let me tell you, uh, if you want to go for, I don't know, creating uh, TikToks, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, whatever it is, I just have more, I'm more comfortable using the S22 Ultra. As we all know, there's that whole dilemma of social media sucks on iPhone or Androids. Yeah, you like you see the difference, right? You see the difference between, and we see it too. We see a clear difference when we're recording or you know making Instagram Reels or using our phones on social media. We see that there's definitely a quality drop when we're using Android devices. Samsung this year has definitely kind of cleaned things up and it's going up there. It's getting closer to iPhone quality on social media. That's why I would personally recommend using S22 Ultra if you were to look to you know putting out some content uh, on social media and you have an Android device, then S22 Ultra. But this dilemma, guys, of, oh my God, social media on Android sucks. Like, it's it's there, it's, it's present. And what can we do about it? Well, companies are working to kind of, to get that better, to make that better. And S22 Ultra is going in the right direction. And obviously other phones and OEMs manufacturers will take note of that. Uh, so camera wise, in conclusion for cameras, they both perform really well. When you have a good amount of sunlight, video wise, they perform really well. Like I didn't dive into detail as you can tell, uh, but which one would I you know, use more often? For me, it's come down to Samsung and um, using it for I, social media once in a while, as well as 100X Zoom. I absolutely love 100X Zoom on S22 Ultra. So for me, that's my choice. So we do need to talk about battery and let's flip the phones over for a sec. When we take a look at both phones, you can probably guess which one is gonna have faster battery speeds. It's the OnePlus. 
That's right, it's, it's the OnePlus 10 Pro. Now, when you're in North America, I just wanna put this out though. In North America, you don't get 80 watts of Super Vogue charging when the OnePlus 10 Pro was originally unveiled in January. It comes with international markets get 80 watts, right? Yeah, North America does not. There's this whole thing of it does not support the, the wattage here. And that's okay, 65 watts though is superior to the max 45 watts on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Would I have liked it if there was 80 watts of Super Vogue on the OnePlus 10 Pro? Of course I would, but nonetheless, it still performs like a champ. Now they both have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries. And overall, I can tell you that OnePlus 10 Pro battery life does edge out the S22 Ultra just a little bit. They're both getting about five to six hours of screen on time, but OnePlus 10 Pro edges out with like an extra half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, and charging speeds for me, when taking a look at both of these devices, it was really important because I mean, I'm frequently using my phone, so I don't have, I don't wanna charge, I don't charge it when I'm sleeping either. So I really wanna just plug in in the morning and get on with my day. And S22 Ultra just takes a little bit longer to charge, whereas OnePlus 10 Pro, man, within like 25, 30 minutes, I'm all set for the day. I don't need to worry about, you know, charging it uh, at night or waiting an hour or two. It's all, it's set within like 30 minutes, zero to 135, 34, 35 minutes. That's really good. Now, what I can tell you is, if you're gonna use both, any of these two devices, uh, you don't need to worry about battery life throughout, throughout the day, especially if you're at work and you're near like a charging station or whatever, uh, or if you're in your car, like you don't need to worry about, oh man, my phone's gonna die on me and I need to, I need to charge it. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, but if you're gonna worry about, all right, I don't have too much time to charge my phone, how much charge is my phone going to get? OnePlus 10 Pro is the way to go. It's definitely the way to go. And I think overall, uh, because of this OnePlus 10 Pro does win in the battery department. Granted, uh, Samsung a super 0 0.01 or 0.1, would it be 6.8, 6.8, larger display at 6.8 inches. And it houses the S Pen, which does take up battery life. Like if it does, you have to kind of put that into account as well. So there is that too. Uh, but OnePlus 10 Pro has pre performing like a champ too. So where did this piece of hair come? <laughs> there we go. Uh, has been performing like a champ in the battery department, but overall, I'm gonna have to say OnePlus 10 Pro is the way to go for battery charging speeds and battery life. All right, now let's talk about price for both of these two. So let's put aside OnePlus 10 Pro for a sec and talk about Galaxy S22 Ultra. I'll be putting the prices up right here. So base model is eight gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage for $11.99. My model right here is 12 gigs and 256 gigs of storage. I believe that's $12.99. However, I bought mine during the pre-order period and I got it at $11.99 for no extra cost. So for those of you who were able to get that during pre-order period, good job. You got extra, extra storage and extra RAM. But I kind of wish that was the base model. I don't know why. There really isn't too much of an issue of having eight gigs of RAM, but 128 gigs the years, you know, go on. I think 128 gigs should slowly start to see its day and kind of end its life cycle and 256 gigs become the standard. I mean, iPhone SE still comes with 64 gigs of storage. iPad Air still comes with 64 gigs of storage. I mean, come on, Apple. Anyway, price is right here. $1199 is still a premium price for S22 Ultra. I mean, you're getting, if you wanna compare it to something like the S22 Plus, which by the way, I think is more of a competitor to the OnePlus 10 Pro. However, these are their top notch flagships as of right now, at least for OnePlus. Um, that's why there's this comparison going on. Uh, but if you wanna get a more squared off, if you want the note, like a note design with the S Pen, I want top of the line everything from Samsung with the S Pen and whatnot, then yeah, $11.99 is the price you're paying for. But if you don't need all of that, if you really don't need all of that, then OnePlus 10 Pro is probably the device you wanna go for. I mean, look at it. In North America, this is the only thing we're getting. Eight gigs of RAM, 120 gigs of storage for $8.99. For $8.99, this is a really good competitor. It's going to compete with Pixel 6 Pro. It's going to complete compete more with Galaxy S22 Ultra, which 
in fact, is $9.99. Well, S22 Plus, not S22 Ultra, which is $9.99. S22 is $7.99. So for an extra hundred, you're getting more of a pro or a, uh, yeah, more of a pro phone. Even though, you know, it's next thing is up is S22 Plus. North America, this is the only configuration you're getting. So if you want to get 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, well, you kind of have to look elsewhere, you know, um, import it from international markets to North America. So yeah, there is pricing on OnePlus 10 Pro. I think it was priced really well. Last year was a little bit too high, but this year OnePlus 10 Pro has done really well. Granted, they didn't release a OnePlus 10, a base OnePlus 10. Rumors are suggesting about a OnePlus 10 Ultra, which is probably going to compete more with S22 Ultra. But for $899 and for what you're getting in the OnePlus 10 Pro, a really good camera setup, uh, really good charging speeds and battery life. And overall, great display and performance too. I don't $899 really is a pretty good price point for OnePlus 10 Pro. And I think uh, it is going to beat out many of its competitors. However, if you really want the really premium, premium note, with the S Pen, the extra camera features, the more premium display you want, the more premium of everything, S22 Ultra is probably the way to go. Um, and you kind of have to sit down and think to yourself, do I need all of these or do I want all of these? That's the thing you kind of want to, you know, take a look at. But if you're on a budget, then while both of these are expensive phones, $899 and $12 or $1199, uh, taking a look at their actual prices, then OnePlus 10 Pro is cheaper in price. And I think you're getting more bang for your buck. I would personally say OnePlus 10 Pro is the way to go if price is one of your de determining factors. And that about wraps up this video. Final thoughts. These are both great devices. They really are. My recommendation would be check both of them out in stores if you have the uh, option to. In North America, especially in the US, uh, T-Mobile is going to be the exclusive carrier for the OnePlus 10 Pro. So if you just want to stop in a T-Mobile store and check it out, uh, definitely would recommend it. S22 Ultra is obviously available on all major carriers in the US as well as carriers uh, in like Canada, for example. My final thoughts, both are great devices. It all comes down to preference. Which one is, do you want? Uh, are you more of the premium guy? You want a more premium everything or you just need that device that is going to get you with everything from camera to display. It's going to suffice all of your needs without, you know, getting past $9.99, breaking that $1,000 mark. If so, OnePlus 10 Pro, if you want the, all the premium, then I would say Galaxy S22 Ultra. What is my personal choice? Well, I'd say S22 Ultra, and I know OnePlus did beat it, like in my personal opinion, OnePlus did better in battery and price, for example. Uh, but for me, it, it has come down to pretty much this design, the build, and the S Pen. Like I really have gotten used to, I never thought I would get used to this S Pen, but I really have come to love, use it just as like my mouse, and use it to jot down notes. I really come to love the S Pen on the S22 Ultra, so for me, I, personal, just personal preference, I would say S22 Ultra. And I, I like this design too. I really do like this green color. Uh, but that about wraps up this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to super mad that like button, comment down below, and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the YouTube channel a lot. It will help push my content out to more people. Anyway, that's been it for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.